The Signal Oil Program. Yes, the Signal Oil Program. The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program. The Whistler. I'm a whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. Rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. And Signal Gasoline is tops, too. Tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal Circle sign in yellow and black that identifies independently operated Signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. Letter to Melanie. The tiny beanery on the main street was called the Heart of Gold, but the title bore little, if any, reference to the people who ate there, the miners, transients, local merchants, and people like Hal Benton. Perhaps the Heart of Gold held something more for Hal Benton. He was there regularly enough. Every time he came into town from the mine in the back country of Sonora, Hal's partner, Walter Reese, was interested only in the mail and supplies, but for Hal, Tall, young, and good-looking. There just might have been another attraction. Well, what'll it be for dessert, Hal, honey? Anything your little heart desires. Oh, you mean it, Terry? You know I do. Oh, fine. A piece of pie. Oh, the pie, he said. <laughs> I'll bet you baked it with your own two little hands. Oh, sometimes I don't think you'd notice if I had three. What about your partner? How about it, Walter? Walt! Uh-huh. Oh, Sorry, sorry. Uh, nothing for me, Terry. Okay, I'll get your pie, Hal. Oh, <laughs> another letter from Melody, huh? <laughs> I don't get you at all. Joining a pen club, writing to some dame you never met? I don't get it. No, I I guess you wouldn't, Hal. Now, you think a good-looking guy like me, I why, you... know, I know. A good-looking guy like you. Have to beat them off of the club. Oh, I was just kidding, Walt. Here's your slab of blueberry, honey. Oh, thanks, you gorgeous hunk of stuff. Oh, eat your pie, you two-timer. <laughs> uh, Hal, we should be getting back to camp soon. Oh, now, Walter, don't rush lover boy out of town. He wants to play post office. Yeah, sure. Relax, Walter, relax. What's your hurry? Well, it's just that I Oh, you're anxious we... to get back to your typewriter, huh? Hey, why don't you take in a movie, Walter? Do you good? Well, I don't know. Uh, how much do I owe you, Terry? Uh, dollar three. Here. Here you are. Okay. Uh, look, what time do you get off tonight, Terry? Oh, a couple of hours. Oh? You know something? What? This pie is lousy. Oh. Well. Hey, you leaving too? Uh, yes, sir. I'm the impatient type, honey. Two hours is a long time. Wall is right. Got to get back to camp. Oh, fine. So I'll see you around, sugar. Come on, Walt. Come on. It's back to camp for you, isn't it, Hal? Yes, with all your other interests. The mine you and Walter are working in the back country is the most important thing in your life. It's most important to Walter, too. Although he makes you wonder sometimes, like right now, back at your camp in the hills, sitting across from you by the lantern, pecking away at the old battered typewriter. Another letter to Melanie. Melanie Lawton. Walter's Correspondence Club Sweetheart. Walt, what's the good of all this letter writing to your bashful widow in Tacoma if you never plan to meet the dame? Well, perhaps I do intend to meet Melanie. <laughs> sure, sure. You don't believe me, Hal, do you? Just because it doesn't mean anything to you. You can have any woman you want, anytime. Sure. You're handsome, Hal. Well, 
Maybe you'll be surprised. Melanie's driving to San Francisco next week. No. <laughs> really? That's right. And she intends to stop by Sonora. In the days that follow, you wonder about your partner. He's acting nervously, and you're certain it has to do with a visit from his pen partner, Melanie Lawton. And then one evening on your next trip into town, as you approach the hotel, Walter stops suddenly. Uh, what's the matter, Walt? Uh, Hal. Yeah? Uh, Hal, I'd... Well, I'd like to go in alone. Could... Could you perhaps go on down and meet Terry, maybe? I'm a... Well, I'm a... I'm a little nervous. About what? About meeting her, Melanie. You really mean it? She's here? Inside, yes. That's her car up front. She wrote me about it. Well, well. <laughs> okay, Walter, sure. Go ahead, go meet your girlfriend. <laughs> hey, wait, uh, are you going to tell her you're really Walter Reese instead of using that phony pen name that you've been using, uh, William Blades? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I should. Now. It surprises you, doesn't it, Hal? Even more as you walk past the huge convertible car parked in at the curb. And then a thought hits you very suddenly, doesn't it, Hal? The big car. What it must have cost. The money that Melanie Lawton must have to own it. And then another thought. Something Walter said. Something that suddenly has a new meaning. You can have any woman you want, any time. Sure. You're a handsome Hal. Yeah. Yeah, you know, maybe you're right, Walt. I wonder just how lonesome your rich girlfriend is. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> With the prologue of Letter to Melanie, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange story by The Whistler. If you'll be needing new tires soon, you're naturally interested in getting the biggest allowance for your old tires. And biggest allowance is just exactly what signal dealers are offering right now. Yes, that sign outside signal service stations means what it says. Biggest allowance for your old tires on new top quality Lee tires. Not cut-rate secondary tires, mind you, but nationally advertised tires by Lee of Conshohocken. For 47 years, the finest of first-line tires. Because of their exclusive double-life rayon cord construction, Lee tires have long been outstanding for mileage and safety. But today's Lees are so much finer, so vastly improved, they're actually giving 30 to 40 percent more miles. The secret? Lee uses long-wearing cold rubber and toughens it still more with patented high-abrasive Phil Black O. For trouble-free service and safety, you just can't buy a finer tire than the handsome new 8-rib Super Deluxe Lee tire. And for value, you can't beat that whopping trade-in allowance that signal stations are offering now. So before you buy any tires, be wise. Find out how much your old tires are worth now at your nearest signal service station. Your curiosity is aroused, isn't it, Hal? As it always is when there's money in sight, any kind of money. And now you wonder if Walter hasn't found the real answer without knowing. Yes, his letters to a wealthy, lonely woman, Melanie Lawton, who drove all this way to see him. And you decide that the situation is worth looking into. Yes. And a few minutes after that decision, you enter the hotel cocktail bar, approach Walter and the woman who's sitting with him at the bar. Well, hello. What? Oh. Huh? Oh. <laughs> Walter, you old fox? Well, aren't you going to introduce me? Uh, well, of course. Well, this, this must be Mr. Benton. Uh, yes, Melanie. Uh, Miss Melanie Lawton, this is my partner, Hal Benton. How do you do? Hello. 
Walter was just telling me about you, Mr. Denton. Well, uh, that's just like him. What did he say? Oh, that's a secret. He, I promised him I wouldn't tell you. And you're not a gal to break a secret, huh? <laughs> well, here. Look, can I uh, borrow a stool here and buy a drink, huh? What do well, you no. Uh, Melanie, uh, Mrs. Lawton's had quite a drive, and she was just going to turn in, and I thought oh, it's, that... it's quite all right, Walter, really. I don't mind. Well... Uh... Your uh, things out of the car, Mrs. Lawton? I know, they're... Oh, bad service in a town like this, Mrs. Lawton. But I'll take care of it. That is, unless you'd rather, Walter. I don't want to interfere, you uh, know. No, no, of course I'll do it. I'll be right back, Melanie. <laughs> You watch him go. Realize that he isn't angry, only embarrassed and confused. And you concentrate on talking pleasantly with Melanie Lawton. It's easy, isn't it, Hal? Easy and pleasant. And in the next few moments, you turn on the charm all the way. You know, Mrs. Lawton, uh, Melanie, I'm going to make a little threat right here and now. Oh? Yep. We're outspoken up here, straight from the shoulder. So I'm telling you, that partner of mine isn't going to have all your time to himself. Oh, well, really, Mr. Benton? Uh, I... how? All right. <laughs> you say you got to turn in, but I'm not going to let you get away with that. No, sir, not when there's a moon out and... Uh... Oh, now, don't be silly. Huh? Anyway, here comes Walter. I've got to say goodnight to you both right now. Okay. You can try, but I'm a stubborn man. Very stubborn. Yes? Oh. Oh, Mr. Benton. Uh, how? Oh, Mr. Benton, really? I know, I know, I know. You just said goodnight to me and to Walter. <laughs> he believes it, too. Went down to the depot. A red-hot game of checkers on tap. Well, you, you don't believe it that I meant it when I said goodnight? Not with that moon. Like I said... Oh, now, please. Oh, Melanie, I'm like a little boy at heart, really. I just have to drive that convertible around the block, at least. I'll give you the keys. You can... Oh, I'm not that much of a little boy. Oh, come on. Just around the block, Melanie. All right. Just around the block, Mr. Benton. How? <laughs> Another block? Oh, no, Mr. Benton. Now, I don't think uh, that... Uh, how? All right. How? Another block. Well, like I said, Walter, I was on my way down here about a quarter of an hour ago, and I bumped into Melanie as she stepped out of the hotel. Uh, Hal, uh... Don't you think it's strange? I, I mean, for to just to go to San Francisco without a word? Well, she told me to say goodbye, do you? Oh, women are funny, Walter. Come on, come on, let's get back to camp. Yeah, yeah, let's do. Uh, Hal, I, I know this must seem silly to you, but Melanie's leaving like that without saying goodbye. Well, well, it's kind of knocked me out. Do, well, do you think you could handle the mine alone for a couple of weeks? What? Why? What do you got in mind? Well, it's just like I said, this thing with Melanie ending like it did, it kind of knocked me out. And and if you don't mind, I'd like to run up to Sacramento and spend a couple of weeks with my sister and her husband. I'm, well, I'm just nuts about the kids. I think it's a good idea, Walter. A great idea. You didn't expect a lucky break like this, did you, Hal? The one thing that worried you, how to keep Walter in camp every evening while you gave your attention to the attractive and wealthy Melanie Lawton has been solved by Walter's decision to visit his sister in Sacramento. The next evening, dining with Melanie, you're very sure of yourself and your charm. Hal, how come Walter didn't come in with you tonight? Well, he's gone. Gone? But I don't understand. <laughs> Neither do I. He just up and left for Sacramento. Told me to tell you goodbye for him. But he wrote so many nice letters to me. Look, uh, let's forget it, huh? They weren't wasted, the letters. After all, they brought us together. Yes. 
Yes, Al, they did do that, but... Oh, I still can't see why Walter left like that. It, it's all so strange and... And yet so nice, too. Sure it is, and it'll keep getting nicer if you decide to stick around. Look, you don't really have to go down to San Francisco now, do you? No. No, it isn't important, really. I've been thinking about it, Hal, thinking that... Oh, well, I'd sort of like to stay here in Sonora a while. Oh, it's such a lovely town. <laughs> and the people are so friendly, hmm? So very friendly. <laughs> There are other evenings with Melanie. Evenings when she picks you up at the bridge a quarter of a mile from your camp. And the two of you go for long drives through the countryside. The mine has become unimportant to you now, hasn't it, Hal? Because you found another way. An easier way to make money. Yes. You've a definite plan in mind, haven't you? And one evening when you're out with Melanie... You're very quiet tonight, Hal. Huh? Oh, sorry. Business on the brain. Oh, the mine? Yeah, yeah. And it looks like Walter picked another lemon. I had a different spot all staked out. Mexico, but Walter couldn't see it. Even Muller couldn't talk him into it. Muller? Who's he? Oh, C.J. Muller. is a friend of ours in San Francisco. Pretty shrewd speculator. Oh. Yeah, but Walter wouldn't budge. Says Muller's percentage of the take is too high. Maybe he's right. <laughs> Who'd be willing to take a chance on a couple of eggs like Waller and me? Oh, I see. Oh, look, look, it's too nice a night to talk about business. How about dri driving over to Jimtown? You ever been there? No. No, oh, is it fun? Well, you'll love it. You'll love it. Turn right at the next intersection. <laughs> it's done, isn't it, Hal? You've made the first move of the campaign. The subtle beginning of your plan to sell Melanie Lawton the idea of investing some capital in a Mexican gold hunt. And in the evenings that follow, you keep the subject alive, casually mentioning it from time to time, dropping a word now and then at just the right moment. Then you purposely avoid the subject for several days. And finally, at the end of the week, it's Melanie who brings it up again. It's just what you've been waiting for. You know, it's a funny thing, Melanie, you mentioning Muller. I got a letter from him this morning. Oh, still interested? He's frothing at the mouth. Oh, wow. Here, here, read it. Uh, my dear Mr. Benton, I think I could persuade your business partner, Mr. Reese, to accept my terms. I am certain that we... Oh, he is interested, isn't he? He wants to see you. <laughs> yeah, I talked to him on the phone this afternoon. I told him it was still no go. How... You're sold on this idea, aren't you? Going to Mexico. Oh, completely. And all you need is is ten thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. Five thousand to start with, at least. What? What are you thinking about, baby? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all, Hal. <laughs> Come on. Come on, help me squander some quarters in that slot machine, huh? What, again? <laughs> hey, yes, sir. I have a hunch, Melanie. I'm going to hit the jackpot before long. <laughs> You're fully confident now, aren't you, Hal? Your little scheme won't fail. The letter from Muller was all you needed. It's an old letter, and you changed the date on it. But Melanie doesn't know that, does she, Hal? The next evening, you're at the bridge waiting for Melanie as usual. An hour goes by. She's never been this late before, has she, Hal? And you're beginning to wonder if something has gone wrong when... Sorry, I'm late. Well, you had me worried. Oh, oh, really? Oh, I just got back from San Francisco. Uh, San Francisco? Yeah, and you want to know why? Here's this envelope. Huh? Open it. Open it. Go on. Go on. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. What's this? Oh, it's, it's $5,000, Hal. And it's yours to get you started. I'm your new partner. Oh, now, now, look, baby. Look, I can't take this. Why, nonsense. It's a business deal. And I'm certainly old enough to know how to handle my money. And and besides, I... I want to do it, Hal. Well... <laughs> well, this calls for champagne, baby. A lot of it. <laughs> and a very big evening. Well, 
You congratulate yourself, don't you, Hal? Everything has worked out as you knew it would. You could slip out of town in the morning, but you decide to wait a week or so for Melanie's other 5,000. The future looks bright, doesn't it? And the next evening, after you close the mine shaft, you drive into town. Suddenly, you almost freeze with shock at the wheel. Your partner, Walter, is standing at the entrance to a drugstore, talking excitedly to Melanie. You quickly turn a corner and stop the car where you can watch them unobserved. When Melanie leaves, Walter motions a nearby taxi, tosses in his traveling bag, and starts off in the direction of camp. You have to find out how much Walter and Melanie have told each other. You walk half a block and slip down the alley leading to the back door of Melanie's hotel. No one sees you as you hurry up the back stairs to room 204. Oh, Hal. Hello, Melanie. You lied to me about the mine, didn't you, Hal? I saw you talking to Walter. What did he tell you? He didn't have to tell me anything. I knew something was wrong by the way he acted. Where'd he go? Back to camp. Oh, listen, he's putting on an act, honey. He's sore. He's trying to make trouble between us because you and no, I... No, you tell. I phoned Mr. Muller in San Francisco. Oh, I see. He's been in Europe the past year. You... You were very clever, Hal. And I was very foolish. Okay. Well, what now? You want the money back? What? I don't care about the money. What? That doesn't matter. Oh, well, look, baby, look. We can straighten this out. Oh, no, we... no, we can't. What are you doing? I'm going to see to it that you never get the chance to pull this cheap trick again on some... Some other foolish woman. Oh, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can have the dough back. I'm calling the police, Hal. No, you're not. Give me that. Give me that phone. Call the police, will you? It happens suddenly, doesn't it, Hal? A moment of blind rage. Now, as it leaves you, Melanie slips from your grasp, drops to the floor. It was an accident, wasn't it? You didn't really mean to kill her. Melanie. Melanie! You drop into the chair at the desk. The clever little plan that was to put you on easy street has now led you down the road to murder. And it's all Walter's fault, isn't it? If he hadn't talked with Melanie, this wouldn't have happened. Suddenly your eyes fall on a sheet of paper lying on the desk. A letter. A half-finished letter. Melanie. And pick it up. I find it difficult to write this, my dear Catherine. Difficult to admit I've been a fool. You were right all along, becoming involved in the Penn Club was a mistake. And that mistake has cost me $5,000. I was stupid enough to let a cheap swindler take it from me. I don't care about the money anymore. I just want to forget the William Blades incident. There, the letter ends abruptly. You stare at the lifeless body on the floor, then back at the letter. William Blade, the name Walter used when he wrote to Melanie. There's no mention of you in the letter anywhere. Suddenly the way out becomes clear to you. Minutes later, you hurry back out to the alley behind the hotel. Unseen, you reach your car and race back to camp. Walter isn't around anywhere. An hour goes by and still no sign of Walter. Then shortly after 10, a twig snaps behind you and Walter steps into the clearing. So you're back? Yes. I got in this afternoon. Where have you been? Out for a walk. Hal, I saw Melanie earlier this evening. You've got to give back that money. Never mind about me. You better start packing your leaving. Leaving? Unless you want to stick around to face a murder rap. Uh, what? It's Melanie. She's dead. Dead? You... Maybe you'd better sit down. I'll explain the whole setup to you, and I'll make it real, real clear. You tell Walter exactly what's happened, don't you, Hal? And you mention the letter Melanie was writing. 
The letter that will implicate William Blades. That everything will point to him. That you'll have to tell the police about his connection with Melanie Lawton. Reveal him as William Blades. Walter stares at you, an expression of horror on his face. Why? Why didn't you destroy the letter? They... they would never have known about William Blades. I had to protect myself. I'm sorry it's you, Walter, but I had to have a clay pigeon. You're it. You... you'd really do this to me? I have to. But I'll do the best I can to help you get away. Now go on, pack your stuff and beat it. When the police get here, I'll tell them you took the car and headed for San Francisco. You can go in the opposite direction and get the jump on them. Now here, here are the car keys. <laughs> Happy journey. The Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending to tonight's story. Where shall we eat? Where shall we spend the night? Those are two questions you'll be asking again and again if you do any traveling this summer. Well, to help you find happy answers to these questions, Signal Oil Dealers are offering free a 16-page booklet of selected eating and lodging places called Lane's Guide. This handy booklet is packed with useful information. It tells, for instance, whether the lodging place is on a beach or has a swimming pool. In the case of motels, it states whether kitchens are available. And so that you can keep within your budget, it states whether the prices are low, medium, or high. Naturally, no pocket-sized publication could possibly contain every good eating and lodging place. But Lane's Guide, which is prepared by an independent travel organization, includes a representative selection in 243 cities and towns throughout seven western states. We hope you will enjoy this latest step in Signal Oil Company's continuing efforts to make your motoring miles more pleasant. Remember, a copy of Lane's Guide is yours free while the supply lasts at any signal service station. It's over, isn't it, Hal? And you're in the clear. Melanie is dead. And the letter in her room implicating William Blades will lead the police to your partner, Walter Reese. He knows that too, doesn't he? And you're certain the panic that grips him at the moment will force him to run. That's just what you want him to do. It will help to convince the police that he's the man responsible for Melanie's death. And now as you stand facing him across the campfire... So, you thought you'd frame me, Hal. You'd better start rolling, chum. I know. Thanks for the car keys. Thanks! What's the idea? You're crazy throwing the keys away? No. Nah. Now you won't be able to get away, Hal. <laughs> You're confused, Walter. I'm not running. You are. Oh, look, Hal. Down there on the road, a car coming this way. That red light must be the police. You must have made more noise in Melanie's room than you thought. Listen, you fool, get out of here. The police can't prove I'm William Blades. I could tell them you're William Blades. I, I think I will, Hal. You're forgetting one little detail, Walter. You and Melanie exchanged photographs, remember? Yes. We exchanged photographs. And I wouldn't be surprised if she still has yours in that hotel room. That would cinch it. She had the photograph with her, yes. Carried it in her purse. But it's not going to work out the way you figured. Oh, no? No. You see, I... Well, I never thought I was much to look at. You've always said you could get any girl, any time. You're handsome Hal. You never let me forget it. So when Melanie wrote me as William Blades and asked me to send her a photograph... I made myself look good. I sent her one. I sent her yours. That whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil, and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you, to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own.
Featured in tonight's story were Wally Mayer, Eddie Marr, and Sarah Selby. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Joel Malone and Adrian John Doe, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember at this same time next Sunday, another strange tale by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>